Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First time in my life that I do a presentation with a microphone. It sounds strange. <laughs> uh, well, this is a, the, the title of my, as the chairman said, uh, the title of my of my work is Microbial Fuel Cells for Wastewater Treatment and Energy Production. A first economic assessment. This work is a collaboration of two departments, the Department of the Business Administration, that is the one that I belong, and the Department of Chemical Engineering, that apart from myself is the rest of the people that is is, is here. Uh, uh, well, I'm not an expert in, in MFCs. I am in charge of the economic assessment, but well, I will do my best to try to explain you what is the, the, the main objective of, of this work. Well, I, I think that uh, in this session is not uh, necessary to explain what well, I think that everyone is aware of the importance of the of the, of the wastewater and of the water. Uh, well, we, we know that the water, well, uh, from, from my economic bias point of view, uh, well, economy is the science that study the, uh, the uh, resources that are scarce. And we have a very important product. We have a very a, a one important uh, resource that is scarce, and this is the water. We don't have as much water as we want, so we have to take care of it. And I think another property of water that is very important to remark is that the, the water is vital. We need it to, to live. It's not something that we could, uh, uh, we, don't, we, we don't need. So I think that uh, this project is important because simply water is life. And I have a, a picture taken from myself. Uh, I don't know if anyone knows where this photo is taken. Maybe England, a lot of water? No, not really, too sunny. Well, uh, the, the thing is that it's, it's here from La Mancha, no? Lagunas de Rivera. Just to make sure that we, we have here as well water, even we are in the middle of a desert. Uh, water is polluted just because the human use, you know, uh, from our houses and from the manufacturing processes. And so uh, if we don't want to, to get this wastewater uh, incorporating in our food supply, we need to take care of this wastewater. So it should be adequately managed by the disposal. Uh, well, you know maybe better than me that one of the most important treatments that deals with this wastewater is the activated sludge. But it has uh, important disadvantages, it has uh, important drawbacks. Uh, for instance, it has a high sludge generation, and more importantly, uh, it uh, requires a high energy consumption. Uh, basically, the aeration process necessarily to, to carry out this uh, 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 activated sludge is about the 30, well, one of these processes that requires a lot of energy, is the 30, 55 uh, percentage of the total energy demand. So. Uh, what, uh, what we, propose, we propose here is that uh, given that um, the wastewater contains energy in form of uh, organic matter, why don't we try to recover that energy instead of putting energy to remove that, that organic matter to try to be more sustainability, more efficient? And, this is, this is what we want to do, and the way that we want to, to achieve this is uh, by using the microbial field cells. I don't know if you know how to work this. I am not an expert on this, so I will give you a basic explanation as I see it. Now we have the, the dirty water. We have the dirty water that goes to the anode, and uh, there are some microorganisms that they are there. I don't know what they do, but uh, they clean they clean the, the water, they produce CO2, but they also produce electrons and protons. These electrons travel uh, around this resistor and go to the cathode. In this cathode, they are mixed with the protons that travel through the membrane, and they are mixed and combined with oxygen. oxygen. So they produce uh, water. They produce water, but it should be remarked that we also produce 
uh, energy, we produce electricity. So this is a fantastic idea from the point of view that uh, we don't uh, need so much energy, but even we produce a little bit of energy. So it looks that it is a very promising technique. And here is where I start, uh, because uh, we see that it looks very nice, but uh, how about the money? Is that profitable or not? This is what we are going to try to find out. Basically, the aim of this work, as I say here, is to carry out a preliminary economic assessment of an NFC system for the treatment of wastewater coming from a particular type of industry that it is a juice industry. As you can imagine, this juice industry uh, has important uh, wastewaters. They have a important uh, ma ma organic matter. They have a lot of organic material in, in the in the waste water. So it's a good example to try to see the profitability of this option. Well, the case study that we are working with consists of a wastewater treatment plant where the features of the NFC, please don't ask me too many questions about this slide because I basically repeat what <laughs> my colleagues <laughs> told me. And it is based on 10 cells of uh, 2.25 uh, cubic meters each one, treatment of 54 uh, cubic meters per day approximately of wastewater. The COD is this value that we have there, we have there and the remove COD that we are able to uh, achieve is a 90%. We are going to consider different alternatives with different costs. The first alternative is a cathode. If we remember this uh, NFC that we saw in the, in the previous slides, uh, we can use a cathode, cathode electrodes that they are coated with uh, platinum. This, is, this could be the more expensive alternative. Then we have another not that, not that uh, expensive alternative that consists of a, a well, the, the cathode is not coated with, with platinum. And the case T is the traditional activated sludge that we want to check. We want to see if, if these two al first alternatives is more profitable. The results. Well, uh, which alternative is more profitable? We need a criteria to, to tell us which one is the, 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 the give us the, the better advantage. Uh, in order to determine which alternative is the best suited, what we are going to use is a criteria economical. This criteria economics, well, we are going to use two criteria, uh, economic criteria. Uh, basically are the net present value that we can see here, the net present value, and the internal rate of return. Uh, mm, this is the dynamic, dynamic economic criteria because we consider that the cash flows that we have is uh, um, the, the, the value changing with the time. Sorry, because the Spanish translation of the net present value, where I use in my presentation, is the valor actual neto. <laughs> it's the band that we have here, and it depends of uh, several important variables. Firstly, uh, the initial investment, that it is uh, the variable A, the cash flows, that uh, are the variable Q, and the discount of rate, K, okay? and inflation are the variables that we are considering for uh, assessing our investment. And of course, we have to determine as well what is the duration of the investment. Another criteria very widely used in uh, investment assessment is the internal rate of return, where we have the same variables, but the uh, rate of discount, no? because uh, this uh, internal rate of return is by definition, uh, the rate of discount that makes the net present value equal to zero. Well, I don't know if you are familiar with this notation. It's, it's, it's common in, in, at least in, in engineering for uh, assessing investments. 
one of the cash flows that we are going to consider are not, uh, we, are, we don't have benefits with this treatment. I mean, we have to treat the, the water because uh, by law they force us to, to deal with. But what we can compute are the savings that we obtain with respect to the case T. That uh, I, remember, I, I recall that it is the case of the traditional activated sludge. So the class, remember that the cash flows that we are going to show here is, uh, are, are the savings that we have with respect to case C. Uh, the initial investment is, uh, uh, well, uh, the initial investment of the both best cases, case A and case B, as we assume, uh, they are higher than the uh, traditional uh, west, with the west, west uh, water treatment. I will give you some assumptions that we have done for the investments, and there are some variables that we have to uh, assume. First of all, the inflation is assumed that is equal to 2%. Well, this is an assumption. Is this not? We don't. We are not going. We don't know what is going to be the inflation for the next years. But uh, according to the European Central Bank, if the inflation is under control, at least it should be around the 2%. Uh, the discount route is the minimal rentability. Sometimes it can be understood as the minimal rentability, and nowadays we cannot get more than 3% of if you want to invest in, in, in the bank, for instance. And the duration of the, of the investment is 15 years. Here we have some data, maybe it's of your interest, uh, of the estimation that we have done for the initial investment of the three different alternatives. We can see that, well, all these things is the material that we need for the uh, uh, NFC, and this is the material that we need for the uh, uh, sludge at, at, uh, activated sludge treatment. We can see that the first two cases, the initial investment, as we assume, is higher than with the uh, traditional treatment. We have as well to assume, or we have to, uh, we have assumed as well, that uh, the the quantity of energy that we are able to recover is not deterministic, is not fixed, it can it may vary. So we have uh, thought that maybe uh, three different scenarios uh, could model well what can happen in the future. We are going to say that if everything goes well and we have a perfect design of the of the fuel cell. Uh, we have this optimistic scenario where the columbic efficiency is equal to 20%. We have maybe not that optimistic, a probable scenario with a columbic efficiency equal to 10% and the pessimistic scenario where everything uh, goes a little bit wrong is equal to 5%. I remember that this variable is a, a variable, a key variable that gives us information about how much energy we are able to generate with the microbial fuel cell. Here we have the cash flows. I remember that this has, these cash flows for the case A and case B are based on the savings with respect to the case C. This is the reason that the initial investment for implementing one NFC is a negative with respect to the case C because it's cheaper uh, the reactor uh, that we use in the case C. And these are the cash flows that we obtain in different scenarios. This is the net present value and this is the internal rate of return. As we can see, and this is the, uh, one of the main conclusions of this work, is that the net present value is, is always uh, greater than zero. That means that uh, it's uh, advisable to invest in this kind of technology. Maybe the question is which option is better, the case A or the case, or the case B? Well, what we have here is uh, something interesting because if we look at the net present value, uh, well, most of the situations um, recommend the case A. But if we check the internal rate of return, the case B is the one at advice. So what is happening here? One of the one of the um, of my colleagues. It was a she was she is a a, a student. Well, now she has finished her, her degree. 
but uh, she was uh, doing this kind of, of, of work in her final dissertation and she was saying, Juan Ramon, look, this is something that we have wrong. It is not possible that we have, for the case A, a net present value greater than the case B, but if we check at the internal rate of return, we have the different, the opposite conclusion. And I said, well, this is not uh, nothing wrong. What we have here is an interesting phenomenon that is called the Fisher intersection. Well, uh, I don't know, I don't have too much <laughs> time for, for explaining, but basically it, it is something that it can happen. We have the case A for some discount rates that advise the case A, but the internal rate of return advise uh, or the, or the, the other case. But both of them, in any case, are more advisable than the case C from the economic point of view. So finally, my, my conclusions, as, as I see the, the topic, someone that is not an expert in FCs, I hope I, I didn't bore you too much with my economic uh, point of view. The NFC systems are obtaining promising results in academic research. I think that all of you agree with that. But if we want to translate this knowledge to the industry, we have to make sure that we are able to translate that knowledge into money. We have to translate that the industry able to uh, implement this kind of technology. It can be profitable. You know, I think is one of the of main purposes of this work. So, well, uh, after this boring <laughs> economic uh, talk, I would like to to you to have a takeaway from this from this talk is that this work has shown solid evidences of the benefit that NFCs may bring. And um, well, that's all. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>